In my morning devotions, I've been, I've just started reading through uh, Genesis, and um, just in looking at some of these things, so that, that, that's something we need to hear. So Genesis chapter 12, uh, the topic is promises and problems, and it's illustrated in the life of Abraham. I mean, stop and think about it. If anyone ever had a promise from God, it was Abraham. <laughs> Abraham really had a promise from God. Uh, let's read in, in Genesis 12, starting in verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they'd gathered, and the souls that they'd gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. <laughs> and so we just stop reading there. Here's a promise that God makes to, to Abraham. And it's repeated several times. It's expanded. Uh, in fact, let's, let's read on in verse 6. And Abram passed through the land under the place of Sychem, under the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. So, um, not only a promise, then it's repeated. It, it, you know, he graphically says, now this, is, this is what I'm going to give you. This is what you can see here. And now the problems begin. You know, as, we, as you get into chapter 12 there, uh, some, some pretty harsh things spring up. And I want to just remind you, you know, I guess none of us really need to be reminded of the reality of life, but uh, we need to realize something. Life will have problems. <laughs> you probably haven't experienced that yet. Uh, but life is basically problem solving, isn't it? You know, just very rare for something to go exactly the way you figured it would. Well, problem number one in verse 10. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. I looked up that word sojourn. Um, it basically means to seek hospitality or to dwell somewhere temporarily. They weren't, they weren't come to stay. They were just come to pass. And the thing that, that I noticed about these, this section of Scripture is just because a person has a promise doesn't mean they won't have any problems. And that applies to us as New Testament Christians as well. We have some great promises. I mean, there's just some wonderful things that God has told us, and they're true. But it doesn't mean we won't have problems. <laughs> His first problem was famine. That's a major problem. I, I doubt if any of us have experienced that. And, and you, know, we can, you know, we can criticize Abram for how he responded and so on. But listen, I, you know, I don't know what I'd do if, if there was no food anywhere and I couldn't get any food. And, you know, who knows? Uh, so the first problem was, uh, was famine. There was a secondary problem that as they went into Egypt, he was a bit afraid. Uh, look at verse 11. came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. <laughs> Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee that they shall say, This is his wife, and they'll kill me, but they'll save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister. And it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. Uh, so, uh, his first problem was famine. His solution was go to Egypt. His, uh, part of that problem was fear, and his solution to that one was, let's lie. <laughs> we'll talk about that more in, in just a moment. Uh, but then as, as time went by, they, they left Egypt. He was discovered, and uh, you know, God, God protected him. But in chapter 13, you see family conflict. Uh, him and he, you know, Lot had come with him, and uh, they both ended up being pretty wealthy, having servants, having lots of things. Uh, look at chapter 13, verse 5. 
And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And we just, just stop reading there. Uh, family conflict, that's a big problem. Some of you have experienced it. it, could, it quite often murder can result from family problems. Uh, Abram's, Abraham's solution, it, it's really a good solution he, he, he has, and it's just based on his humility. Uh, he, he works it out with Lot. He says, you know, look around here. You choose what you want. I'll take the rest. And, you know, that's a very humble attitude, isn't it? In uh, verse 14, uh, the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was, was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. So God repeats his promise again. God is really persistent, isn't he? He wants Abraham to know, I've got something in mind for you. But still these problems can continue to come. Um, we're not going to emphasize the next two so much, but in chapter 14 there's war. War breaks out, and as a result his nephew Lot is taken captive. Uh, chapter 14, verse 12, they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods, and departed. They, they took him. Well, Abraham's basic solution was he organized a small army and went and took him back. <laughs> uh, you know, that's sometimes you just got to do something. Uh, there's, there's times when physically we've, you know, we pray and we do things, but there's, we pray, but we've also got to do things. Um, problem number four, I guess you might say, in chapter 15, God had promised that their seed would be like the sand of the, and the dust and, and so on, but they're going childless. In chapter 15, um, uh, let's see here. Let me read quite a bit of it, starting in verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abr Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Man, again, God repeats his promise. And, you know, what a blessing it is to see these things. Now, unfortunately... In chapter 16, Sarah has a solution that we're, we're still paying for, but uh, <clears throat> that, was, uh, that was not uh, what God, God intended. And, and again, I just remind you of, of my theme tonight. Uh, just because we have a promise doesn't mean we won't have problems. And, and just like God keeps repeating it to, to Abraham, uh, you know, God's promise to us, God's promises to us are true. And uh, the problems don't take them away. Now, just move back a little bit. Some things may have made Abraham's situation worse. I say may on some of these because the Bible doesn't say this was a bad thing. Um, it just records it as, as history. One of those I've often wondered about is Abra Abram. Pardon me if I call him Abraham before God's changed his name, but um, taking Lot with him. Did you notice that several of Abraham's problems involved Lot? <laughs> um, in chapter 12 verse 1 God had said get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred <laughs> now you know, the Bible doesn't say oh Abraham was wrong to take Lot but it seems to have been at least <coughs> at least added to his, his problems the other thing that I, I've often wondered about and you hear different comments is going to Egypt Having that famine, you, you never read where God says, yeah, go down to Egypt and that'll, that'll help you out. And, and in Scripture, Egypt is often pictured as uh, tr trusting the world. Uh, for instance, in Isaiah 31, verse 1, 
Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they're many and in horsemen because they're very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. And that's just a common picture uh, that God uses. He uses Egypt as a picture of not trusting God. You know, we trust this powerful country. Um, so Abraham may have added to his problems. And, of course, we would never do that. <laughs> There's nothing we ever do that would you know, make our... Uh, I'm, I'm being facetious there. A lot of the problems we have are a direct result of things we've done, aren't they? Uh, unfortunately... Uh, but the application here is basically, uh, we need to be faithful even when it's difficult. Uh, a famine comes, well, God had called them to a particular place. And again, I don't, uh, I don't claim any special knowledge here or, or any, uh, I certainly wouldn't consider myself more a man of faith than Abraham was. Uh, but uh, I think there's, a, there's an application we can make. When it gets tough, uh, that's the time when it's to trust the Lord. And when there's no problems, it's, we're not really trusting the Lord then either, are we? <laughs> you know, oftentimes we're just going, going on our way. And uh, we can apply this to a lot of things in the, in the Christian life. You know, I find a lot of people, they value the world much more than they value the Lord. I, 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 there's a lot of people I wish were here tonight to hear this message. But for whatever reason, they're, they're not here. Um, and there's, there's people who, you know, oh, pastor, I can't come to church. I, I've, I've got a you know, big day at work tomorrow, and I'm, I'm going to have to you know, miss church. I'm waiting for the day when somebody tells me, pastor, I'm, I'm not going to work tomorrow because I want to be ready for church. <laughs> now, you know, I've known people who have given up work, obviously, to, to serve the Lord. Uh, but some of these things you can see, and as you read, you think, oh, I think that may have, that may have added to his problems. And uh, we need to just be careful to do right, uh, no matter what the situation. One thing that Abraham did that we know was wrong was when he lied. Uh, I mean, there's no, we don't have to wonder, oh, was that the right thing to do? And yet it's, it's so common to do it when we rationalize our sin in order to work out what God wants to happen. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I've, I've seen, I'm not going to give you illustrations, but I've seen and, and experienced people, Christians, doing terrible things and saying, oh, well, you know. Um, I, I've seen preachers lie and just because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. And uh, We need to be careful. Uh, we know lying is wrong. It's like we're saying, poor God, oh, you know, he, he couldn't have seen this coming. I'm going to have to sort this out for him. Um, there's things we can see where Abraham added to the problem. But, you know, there's some things Abraham did that we know were right and things that we can duplicate. One, it, it, chapter 12, verse 4, it always amazes me. Every time I read this verse, you know, God tells him, and verse 4, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Boom. <laughs> you know, Abraham obeyed the Lord. What a blessing. Uh, I, I wish I was that, uh, th that um, res responsive to the Lord's requests. And uh, God records it again in Hebrews 11, when he says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Lord, you tell me where I'm going and I'll go. No, he didn't say that. He just took off. <laughs> uh, it's just amazing. Abraham obeyed God. Instant obedience. In chapter 12, verse 8, we see Abraham worshipped God. He removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And that was the common practice that Abram had. When he got to a place, he pitched a tent and he built an altar. And those are the two main areas that God wants, has established for us, our family and our worship, our family worship even. Um, Pitched a tent, he looking after his family, he built an altar. He was trusting the Lord. And uh, we can do that. Wherever we go, whatever we're doing, uh, those need to be our, our priorities. Uh, so we see him obeying God, worshiping God. In chapter 15, uh, let me read verse 1 and then verse 6. We see him believing God. You see this many times. Uh, chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And then verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, 
and he counted it to him for righteousness. He just believed the Lord. Uh, what a blessing. Yeah, all those different problems, sure. Uh, he had to deal with this and that, and some of them were his own fault and, and so on. But that, that didn't stop him from doing these right things. And uh, there, there's a lesson there for us. Let me read, um, turn if you would to Hebrews 11. And let's read part of the account there. And then we're pretty much done. But Hebrews 11, starting in verse 8. <clears throat> faith chapter, of course. Hebrews 11, 8 says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. I just stop reading there. Uh, Abraham is known as a, as a man of faith. Uh, what a blessing. So, a couple of things that, that I got from this. One is God has given us promises. We should rejoice in that. Uh, we should believe him. You know, every promise in the book is true. Every chapter, every verse, all the way through. Yeah. Now, I do need to make a little mental footnote here. There are some things God has not promised. <laughs> uh, you know, I hear people sometimes say, oh, you know, I thought God would do this. Or I, you know, I believe God would do this. Uh, there used to be a song, I don't know the, the name of it, but basically it said, God hath not promised, skies always blue, uh, flower strewn pathways all your life through. And, uh, you know, God, God hasn't promised you're always going to have an easy time. You don't have that promise from God. And we need to be careful that we don't claim things as promises that aren't and ignore the promises that are. Uh, God has given us promises. The other, the other thing is we will have to deal with problems. I mean, just count on it. I don't, I don't know that we particularly look forward to it or uh, promote it, but uh, deal with them by faith. Life is a choice. There's constant choices. And if we're going to deal with problems by faith, we've got to go to his word. Uh, we've got to pray. I mean, take it to the Lord in prayer. We need to seek spiritual counsel. I'm amazed at some of the life-changing decisions people make without seeking counsel, spiritual counsel. Uh, man, uh, we need to, to, to get God's um, understanding on things. I'm also amazed how often we go to Egypt. <laughs> you know, we, we, we look to the world for a solution when uh, God has it. Put God first. You know, what, whatever your situation, pitch a tent and build an altar. You know, make sure that, that uh, you, you've got your, your um, priorities right. Uh, I love how the Lord puts it there in Genesis 15. Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Uh, we can trust the Lord. Uh, we, we need to know how to get encouragement from the Lord. Uh, God's given us many problems. Uh, God's given us many promises. Let me get my words right there. God doesn't give us the problems, but... Uh, we are going to face problems, but we face them with the Lord. And uh, this life is just a step into eternity, isn't it? I mean, it, it's not all about this. It's about, uh, it's about eternity. All right, well, I'm going to quit there. Life of Abraham, really interesting fellow. You know, he left what would have been a, a really established situation to live in a tent. <laughs> you know, that was uh, pretty tough. Any comments or questions before we take some, some prayer requests?